get married and that it would be okay then or yeah so so say if there is a homosexual couple and they are having their relationship and they're having sex away from the public uh, according to the Islamic law there is no injunction that can stop that you're not allowed to go in and snoop in a private matter of a human being whatsoever what he does we believe that that is left to God and the individual who, whatever he's, in, he's involved in um, the so f the traditional way of what constitutes a nikah a marriage is that it's two families coming together which constitutes of a male like biologically understanding and a female biologically understanding coming together that's what makes makes a marriage so i do not think that there's a possibility uh from uh from the text that two men can come together and call it a marriage but that, but that's always, always it's always different to what actually happens on the ground you know we do have um um what's it called documentation and I see a lot of people nowadays, uh, intellectuals, bringing these things up about homosexuality in the Islamic world, classically in, in, in historical sense. And um, there are arguments being made that, that, um, that uh, and I, I forgot what it's a particular term. It's basically a relationship where an elderly man with a younger boy. You know, that's how they know. That's how they typically. Yeah. Yeah. That's how the. It, the Old Testament was, it, was typically translated to say that and oh, limit that instead of that's, I see. that's exactly people, how it says it. Yes, yeah. it's like people Peasant, peasantry, think, something like that. Has something like that. Peasant, no, 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 that's no, because uh, yes. pedophilia obviously yeah. is still yeah, this, but also be, because it's between uh, two yeah. males. I think pedophilia has to do with consent because obviously uh, a child has no consent. Mm -hmm. But this one is more to do with like a younger sort of teenage boy. It's called peasantry, something like that. I forgot the name, but like the, the Greeks practiced this and the Romans practiced this. Now we have documentation that these things were taking place in Islamic countries. It wasn't uh, the norm, but these things were known and these things were practiced among certain um, classes. Of, uh, for example, some of the um, ruling classes were <laughs> uh, involved in these things. So a bit more ex experimental. Um, you know, you mentioned something about um, Judas and Jesus. There are uh, Western um, intellectuals as well who have been looked. They've been looking at like Persian poetry in particular. And uh, I don't know if you guys know Rumi. Have you heard of Rumi? Wait until you're 25. You're probably going to get into Rumi by the time you're 25 or something. Uh, but yeah, Rumi is a very famous so sort of like uh, poet, Persian poet. You know, Brennan Petro, all these celebrities quote him all the time. And um, he had... <laughs> so he had a teacher called Shams. And uh, some Western uh, um, intellectuals looked at the, the poetry and they found it very homoerotic. Because the way they would talk to each other, like, my love, I love the eyes, I love touching you, and this stuff. Um, but this is where culture comes in. In the Persian culture, all these things are very um, uh, normal for two male to say I love you, for two males to even hold hands to this day. If you go to certain places in Africa, there's two men who would hold hands and uh, it wouldn't mean anything sexual. I remember when I was like a teenager and I grew up in Germany, my dad, he did the practice. He was holding someone. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So my dad was holding his friend's hand, right? And my friends saw that. And then they came to me, they're like, and they're mocking me. They're like, oh man, your dad is gay. He was holding someone else's hand, right? But I never understood what it meant. But now, you know, researching it, it actually means friendship, you know? And it's platonic friendship. So I feel like what is happening here with all of us is that we are currently re-exploring what sexuality means, you know? And we're trying to like frame it in the best possible way that sort of fits to modernity. But I feel like there are certain things that are sort of primordial, which like transcend these things. Like, for example, I came across images of, um, these are images, 18th century uh, American soldiers during uh, the Civil War. And it was a practice, you would have two soldiers holding hands. Right? And that was perfectly normal. If you were to do it today, 
the interpretation of it would be, oh, these guys are probably gay or homosexual. So it's very similar to the idea of that if Judas was very devoted to, to Jesus or if when Rumi is very devoted to Shams, that there is some form of sexual relationship when really and truly it's just... Uh, Human. Yeah, love between human beings, you know, and love between brothers. And, and, and this is something absolutely normal in certain cultures, Turkish cultures, for example, where I, I grew up around a lot of Turkish people. Two men would come, they'll kiss each other. And you, you've probably seen this in like mafioso films when the Italian boss comes and kisses him, right? It's not because he fancies him, but it's just because... And I feel like that's what it is, that we are currently trying to explore um, these things. When it comes to homophobia, I don't think that religion, at least the Quran that I follow and the way I, I interpret it, that religion sanctions me to go to a person and make him feel less due to, to who he is. I don't think that religion does that. I don't think you have sanction. I don't, there's no Quran verse that says, go to gay people and, and mock them. You know, you're not allowed to do, you're not allowed to mock people who worship other, um, you know, the Quran, there's a verse in the Quran, very beautiful verse, where Allah says, do not mock their gods, lest they will mock your God, your God right? And this is a very beautiful verse, and it says, and when they mock your God, they do it out of uh, passion, because this is something they really believe in, and you come there and you piss, you know, you, you take a piss, you know? And, and, and then God says, for I, God, I have placed that very bias, that very love they have, that for that thing that you disagree with, I've placed it in them. And for the things that you disagree, on the day of judgment, I will tell you about the differences, you see? So to me, that verse, is, it, it's a call to pluralism, you know, uh, in, in society that you will come across people who have not the same opinion as you, who do not believe what you want to believe, it doesn't matter what you say to them, they have a bias, yeah? But in order to create cohesion in society, I think the, the worst thing is by mocking someone. So for those people who do profess to be Muslims in your class, mocking like, and then you, and, and then again do it under the, the guise of, of religion, I don't see where they're getting uh, the justification from. The thing I get um, out of religion, what I see is that most religion stands for peace between all human beings. Yeah. Um, but then you see people of that religion using that exact religion yeah. to cause hammock, to cause yeah. unrest. Yeah. So I think yeah. that just goes in to them. Yeah. So you said about, about marriage, to, yeah. in, in Islam it says about to male and female. Yeah. So there, there are people, that are about 120 million of them, yeah. that's about 1-2% of the population, yeah. uh, that are not either, and that's not, yeah. it's not gender, it's not anything, it's yeah. biological, they are not male, they are not female, yeah. and so, you know, they don't get ever to experience so marriage, one of the highest things, they, they yeah. never get to experience, yeah. and isn't that, it is, it is. So there are, so I came across this fascinating uh, paper uh, that was uh, documenting a particular class of, uh, uh, a class of people in Medina. This is when the Prophet was around. And they're called Muhannif. And Muhannif are people who are uh, effeminate, biologically male, but they are very effeminate in way in in, in, in the way that's they. That's not that's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about biologically someone yeah. that cannot be defined as either male or female. I know. Female, I know. Genitalia yeah. or else yeah. hormones. It's not. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm getting there, yeah. but I'm using because I'm using that as a as an example to the closest thing that you're mentioning, and on those um, these people in Medina. There was a time when they had like a particular uh, sort of position and a particular position they were playing in, in society. So a lot of the Muhannif, they were matchmakers. Because they had no attraction to male or female, they were matchmaking um, males and females because there was um, uh, an injunction between, uh, you know, as a male, it was very difficult back then to just, you know, uh, um, 
be social with female and you know because there's like tribes and it's, it's like more difficult and these people were in between us in the way you know so like they still have a place in society yeah they had it yeah so that's what i was trying to i was getting so it, it, i found it very fascinating that they had uh, a, a place in society now in 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 egypt i believe i remember reading papers about uh so there's so if you for example are born with like uh, you know that people were born with two productive systems, right? So like, the authorities would give you the choice to choose which one you, you, you want. And, and, and there are also people in, in history, in Islamic history, who've never married. You know, like, I, I, I don't think that like, so if marriage is, um, marriage seems to be the benchmark for people to like fulfillment. But I think there are also, also exceptions to the rule, to what you were saying, you know. I don't think these people are any less because they don't have any affinity to any, any, any sexes or anything. Is that what you were saying? Or you, yeah, yeah, I don't think they're any less because of that. Um, but these are a lot of difficult things. I, I'm not able to answer everything. I just talk about the stuff that I really know about. Um, but thank you, what was your name? Uh, my name is Aaron. 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 Yeah. And you're Enea. Enea. Nice meeting you. But thank you very much. It's been a pleasant conversation. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Please have a Quran. A Quran, sure. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. You're right, yeah? How are you doing? Good. You good? Yeah. yeah. Any Great. questions? Um, no. Yeah. I, I've never ever come on Quran. I'd like to see, see if I think.